Today I'm at the start of a total experiment. So I'm just going to say right from the start, I have actually no idea how this is going to end up. But I, so it's not quite a tutorial either. I thought if I filmed the process I go through when I'm trying to make something it might be helpful for other people who are trying to be creative too to see someone else's thought processes as they go through things. So what I've had in my head for a while is that I wanted to create some sort of stitched vase or vessel or I'm not quite sure what I'm going to particularly call it but it was all because I kept I kept bringing back the driftwood and then this piece of wood here is actually just a piece of bark off one of the logs that I get delivered for my fire. But it was such a lovely piece, I couldn't, I couldn't put it on the fire and it's just silver birch. And so I kept this piece out and I've had it on my mantelpiece waiting for something to happen to it for weeks. And so today I thought, just get your stuff together, Marion, sit down and do something with it. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got a piece of old blanket, old felted bit of blanket that I'm going to use as a base. And I've got a piece of a silk shirt that I thrifted when I was visiting my daughter um, a few weeks ago. And so that's the start of it. I'm not even sure what size or what shape or anything. I'm actually just going to cut a piece of this silk off and just cut it off and see what happens. So I have gathered together an amalgamation of all my bits and pieces. So I need a base to actually be stitching other things onto. So at some point I just have to come up somewhere and start to put some stitching in. And I am just going to be doing some just nice running stitches, but I'm not going to attempt to do a straight line. I need to do something tree-like. So I'm just going to wander this stitch up here. I need it to be subtle at the moment. I'm just going to go right up to the top. I sort of have a vision of what I would like it to look like in my head. But whether I can get that into into actual a three dimensional piece of something that looks well I don't know. But as I say to other people, you just have to pick your needle up, start somewhere and see what happens. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Take my own advice and just start somewhere. And I'll turn round and come all the way back down. So some people's creative process may be that they plan everything out and they draw things and they think about it for ages. I do think about it for ages, but I don't draw anything out. I just sit down, pick up my needle and try and get on with it and if there's anything happens in the middle that's a bother I try and just work through that process as I go. So knowing that I actually don't know what I'm doing I'm just going to enjoy the process and see where it takes me and hope by the end I've got something approaching what I think I want. So this definitely isn't going to be something that gets finished today because there's going to be so much work to do on it, I think. So this is definitely just going to be a part one of an ongoing something. I don't even know what to call it. But either way, my first two lines of stitching are on, so I've made a start. I'm just going to leave that. I don't always want to finish them off. I've got a feeling I want some threads. So I wonder whether I feel as if at some point this is going to be attached. 
So by now, I want to maybe put some creases in here as I go. To get some shape. I'm going to put the same colour back in my needle. I think what I would like to do is I'm going to utilise this seam here. I'm just going to make some looseness here so that I've I can manipulate the fabric a bit and I'm going to stitch somewhere up this seam I just go and go up this seam maybe this is a seam I can use for something the wool blanket is very nice to be stitching into I'm wandering off the seam line already, but I think that's all right. Just gonna hold it all in my hands. The two greens are working really nice together. I wasn't sure whether to cut out sides of something and sew them together or try and sew everything into an actual circle to make something round. Oh, how big I wanted it to be. I think I want this one here. To go up there and back round. I might end up all quiet because I'm concentrating. But hopefully you'll not mind that. So I think sometimes I only decide things once I'm half doing them and then things get changed. I think I already know that I need um, need this piece cut off. And I think I cut the wool as well. I definitely want this to be going up to a point. Get some more silk. Use this with a bit of backing on it. Changing my thread to this pearl cotton. I definitely want this extended here. I want to start right at the top. And I think I do just still want to running stitch this on. I'm just going to gather that up a bit because I'd like that to be curling over. Where I've got the join, I'm just going to stitch over it. I'm imagining there's going to be so much stitching on here in the end that it's not going to bother that I'm joining pieces together all the time. I'm already covering up the under stitching already. I think that's okay. I think I sort of just need to get my shape ready first and at the minute the shape's still being formed. I think I'll follow this line of stitches with this pearl cotton. 
because it's adding texture already. I'm just going to let the lines of stitching curve as they will because I'm wanting a tree like organic form. Well, it's a start. I need to take something up there and thread. This is a good bluey green pearl cotton. I'm going to start from the bottom this time and I'm going to follow this sort of a shape in and then I think this will be a side maybe so I'm following the other rows of stitching up at the moment but if the line wants to deviate away <coughs> then that'll be perfectly Okay with me. I'm going to let my needle take the line where it wants to. I'm now wondering whether I need some stiffness to keep the form the way I'd like it to be. I'm hoping that the amount of stitching that goes on will actually help it keep together but I think it'll be a work in progress. I'm aiming to come up to a point here. Goodness knows how I'm attaching this in the end, but somehow. Which I already think I need that creased up. I'm just going to pinch this together. and whip stitch it down at least I'm going to try to so I'm going to take a little pleat and pull it tight almost leaf like I think that's working really well I think that's a little whip stitch and, a, and gathering it up as tight as I can it's actually just making a little pleat, which I think is going to give some structure to what I'm trying to do. I am really pulling that quite tight. I aim to catch this point in at the same time. And I'm going to continue on down. I really like that. I'll finish that off there. If I need to add something on, well, I'll have to add it. But at the moment, it's more important for me to see what I'm trying to get. I, did, I think I need all the pieces together before I can start with all the encrusting it. There's no point doing it yet. I need, I need all my pieces to look like they're going to work. So I'm going to make one more line of stitching here and I think I'm going to take... This is a bit of variegated pearl cotton. This should look good. So I think I'll start from this point that I've got going on here. And again, I'm going to just do the running stitch down. But I would like it to be narrow at the top. And I would like this to belly out here. I really like that shape. I'm just going to let my needle take it where it wants, aiming for out there all the time. I hope this is going to show up. I realise I'm not using very bright threads on top of this dark green. 
But I just had to start it. I just, it's been in my head for so long. I thought the only way it's going to get done is if I decide I'll film it as well. Otherwise, I'll just get so carried away with this, I'll not do anything else. So I'm coming right out to the edge here. And then I think I'll go back in, so it makes it like a little tummy. And I'm going to go straight back up. Exactly the same line. Got a tiny little knot in my thread, but I'm just pulling it through. That's what you can hear. You can hear the little knot come through the silk. I'm just wondering whether to do another bit of creasing here. I think I will. I'm going to head in. I'm going to do more of that creasing up because I really like the way that worked. So I'm just going to take a big bite and do a whip stitch but really pull it in. So it creases the fabric up. Plus it's helping to sort of almost like give it a rib that gives it some uh, texture and some stability rather than it being soft. Yeah, that's really good. Let you see that close up. I'm going to walk this thread up. Actually I'm going to do some running stitching and out. I might end up with brighter threads on but I feel this whole project is going to be all about texture. Usually what I'm doing is representative. So, you know, the birds, the flowers, the tree on the stitch journal, it's all rep about representation. This is sort of not really like that. I don't feel it is. I am thinking about a tree while I'm doing it, but I'm not actually sort of making a tree, which is what I mean when I say it's not representative. More like I want to channel the the spirit of the tree or something. That's more what's in my head at the moment. Finish that off. I really like the way that thread's put little pieces of blue and brown in it. I think I'll do the same on this side here. This might look like a total rubbish video when it comes out. Might not be anything to see except me putting stitches in a bit of ruggy silk. Huh. At this point in the stage, I don't actually know. So I will come up from the bottom again and do the same pleating. to make another rib coming up. Oh, I really like that. I think I'll be doing more of that. But at this moment, I'll just do the running stitch in and out the same. And it just brings that fabric and wool together. I can already feel this part of the fabric really getting stiff, which is quite nice. I really do like that bit of blue, so I didn't think I'd be using a blue, but that's made me realise I need to pick some blue. Right, 
Well, that's coming on a treat. I've moved a bit further on. I've finished this edge back just so I can sort of start and get a shape. And I've followed the line of the stitching that I did right up to there the leaf end is. And I know that I'm going to be attaching the bark here, like this. I don't know how yet. I've got a feeling I'm drilling through and attaching it with leather, but I'm not sure yet. But I, this, is, this is a nice shape here that I feel. And so the next shape that I want to go on to make the next side of the vase, I've actually cut the blanket out in the shape because I want, I want the, the vase to come down like this. So I'm going to do a similar thing to this piece as I've done to there. I've got my silk, I've got my three strands of mossy green and I'm actually just going to stitch this um, silk on and I'm going to leave quite a bit here at the top of this just so I can use it to attach. So I'm going to, I'm just going to stitch that on with running stitches. I'm not sure <clears throat> whether these will be overstitched or not, but at some point I just have to start and stitch the 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 bonnie fabric onto the wool background so I can get the shape that I'm trying to get. And again I'm just going to crease this fabric as I feel I need to. I think I want a big crease of fabric there so I'm actually just going to pull it up leave it loose so I'm not sure what I'll be doing with it yet but I'm going to over sew this edge right the way down the wool and then that means I can actually attach these two pieces together and start something that looks um, three-dimensional now that I've got a sense of the shape that I'm trying to create. So I'll just attach that there. I think I wasn't sure whether I was going to need a lining but maybe I will, maybe I won't. I might have to line the whole thing before I get it sewn into its three-dimensional shape. At the moment I need a flattish shape that I can actually work on and then when it's had a lot of its embellishment then I can sew it into the 3D shape. That's, that's how I feel about it anyway. Not having done it before. I'm sure there might be people out there that have done this a lot and then they they think, what on earth are you doing, Maureen? What? You're making it difficult. But, but not having um, seen anybody like that or seen anybody do it, I just have to find my own way. I just use my thread to go back up. Then I'm just going to leave the tail. Well now I could actually put those together. Do a bit more stitching on here yet. I'm really liking this uh, variegated pearl cotton a lot. It's beautiful. I'm going to put that back in my needle. I'm just going to do some fly stitch to, or feather stitch to um, just make this little fold be attached and just start the actual embellishment a bit. So I'm going to go on and off this little pleat. If I can get this into some sort of a 3D shape in this, by the time I've finished this video, I'd be really pleased and then I can go on to do embellishment on another one.
I'm just managing to catch that fold there but I feel as if my fly stitch wants to come this way so I'll just keep it going the way it wants to go I mean I keep saying fly stitch it's feather stitch And you can make lovely lines with feather stitch and this this uh, variegated thread is absolutely perfect for it you can see that I'm not really thinking about where the stitches are or how long they are just putting them in as I feel like it better just finish that one off I've got this next piece going really well and I made this lovely crease here because I wanted it to join in up there but what it's left me with is this lovely bit of fabric here that's sort of needs to be stitched down in some way but actually what I like about it is that it's such a lovely shape so when I push it here it actually has this lovely sort of a shape that I would like to preserve almost like a wishbone or, or some roots so I'm actually just going to stitch in under here with my running stitch and I'm going to try and preserve that whole piece and make it look more tree like or more root like or whatever just by stitching in underneath I don't necessarily want these stitches to be shown I just want them to be there to keep that piece from undoing so there's that bit if I if I go here I feel as if I stitch that bit down there I pull that in I can maybe come up here on this side where my thumb is and I can just push inwards and maybe go from one side to the other and keep keep this little fold going I think there's something nice going on there and I'm starting to get a form of what I'm thinking that's in my head so I'll smooth that out and just try and keep this fold And you see how lovely that's becoming. That looks lovely to me anyway. I smooth that piece in. Keep it down with my thumb. Oh, that's looking nice. don't know what's going to happen to all the raw edges but something will happen to them so I've got a side going I've got this bit of excess fabric here I've got that side sewn in so I feel as if I could probably put these two together with a ladder stitch and that'll start start me doing my uh, vase or vessel and I think that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to I'm going to finish this bit off. I think I will finish this bit off a moment because I'm not sure where I need to take that thread. Maybe that I cover the inside of it with a contrast colour of some description. But I'm not at that stage yet. I just want to I want to be able to get the whole thing 
before I come to the end of this video, I'd like to have the whole thing there ready to embellish. So I don't want to get carried away on embellishing yet. I'll just cut that thread off. I know it isn't finished off, but it doesn't matter to me that it's not finished off. So, I'm bringing my piece of wood back in, put it where I think it's going to be, which is there. And then if I see where the bottom is, which is on here, I wish I had some way of pinning this on, but I don't. I can see that this bit here is where that bit's going to get in touch with. So I think if I can just put that there and ladder stitch them together, I'll be well on the way. So I'm going to hold them together. Maybe I don't want a ladder stitch. Maybe I want to make a visible join. Do I want a visible join? I think I do want a visible join. I think I'm just going to hold these together. And do... Quite a large overcast stitch. But because it's in my bunny thread, I'm not trying to hide it. I want it to be part of the part of the whole structure. I hope you, I hope you are going to find this interesting. I'm just wondering whether you're just going to get bored with it and think, what the heck is Marion up to? I'm quite honest. I'm wondering that myself. <laughs> I am wondering that myself at the minute. But here we are. Oh, I really like the way that's going. Got a lovely ripple. I'm pleased I decided to do a visible join. The more I do, the more I can see my way forward though. Whereas when I started with just the blooming bit of silk shirt and the blanket, <clears throat> you sort of think, okay, what do I do first? But I've now all, all of a sudden realised that I don't think I need four sides. I think I just need three. So it has a triangular sort of a shape. Now then, what do I do with this bit? I think I want to continue right up there to make a good curve. So I am going to... Where's my thread? So I am going to carry on right up there, just keep going. I hope it encourages somebody else to just take up some stuff and start stitching. Because you never know what you might do until you try. That's how I feel about it at this precise second. You don't know what you can do till you start. It's not like I've got any idea, as you, as you might have realised at the beginning. I haven't drawn anything, I just had an idea in my head of what I would like to achieve. Right, what do I do with this bit? I think I just stitch it down and possibly something else gets stitched over the top eventually. Oh! Well, look at that. That's the start of it. Okay. That's looking quite good. I actually could, I could actually just fold that in 
and sew that to the bottom and that would be the bottom of it starting too so I think I'll do that as well I'll get some more thread still need to be able to get my hands in to be able to sew I can't make it totally 3D yet or else I won't be able to access the bits I need to sew on but I can do some of it and I start to get the shape so maybe let me just have a look and that goes there this gets all stitched on that goes there Yeah, I think I'm just going to make another, I'm going to get another nice piece, about the size of this, and I'm going to make one more, so it's going to be on a triangle shape. I'm actually going to do that off camera, because it's going to be too long otherwise. Oh, it's on the way though, look at that, that's good, that's nice, that curve's nice. And I think I'm definitely going to paint this in. Because I feel as if I want this. I don't actually know what this is. Something I've got somewhere. Oh, I'll just pull it off. Look at that, that's lovely already. It can't be that colour though. But... Somehow it's going to go on there. So that's getting painted. I'm going to make another another side. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to actually cut a piece off my blanket. To just get the same sort of a shape going. Let's see if that would work. So it starts from here. Right, I'm going to go and cover this bit with fabric and I'll come back when that bit's done. I'm just using my ink tents and a bit of acrylic paint as well to just colour this orange stuff up. I think somebody gave me this in a pack of sort of mixed media fibery stuff and I haven't actually ever used it. But I definitely don't want it to be orange and I don't want to go and buy new stuff. So I'm just going to do my best to make this into the colour I do want to use and I hope it's going to work. I've already done that one and it softens down once the water's there so I'm actually able to pull it apart a bit. So I'm quite hopeful that that is going to dry into whatever I can use. It would be nice if I could use it. So I'm going to try and do the same here. And I'm just dabbing on whatever I feel like. There's a bit of blue going on. I'm using plenty of water so it can soak in. Once the, once the water soaks through it, it does seem to be taking the paint quite nicely. So this should dry without much ado, I think. And by the time I'm coming to do my embellishment, it should be ready. Right, I'll stop there. Let both of those pieces dry nicely. Now that I've finished painting my bits of whatever it is, I'm back on to actually making my vessel. I've actually sewn another piece on and unbelievably by serendipity they're actually going to meet at the bottom so I feel as if and that's a finished edge that was the hem edge of the shirt so I'm going to be able to sew that up I think I'll leave it open so I can access everything but here I am with another piece I've cut it into sort of a an organic shape and I am going to just Pull everything inwards, like that, 
but where it's a lot here I'm still going to take it right to the very edge so that I again end up with excess fabric on the front that I can crease as I go. So I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start at the bottom of course now my hands have got ink tents on them but never mind and I'm just going to fold over just maybe just shy of half an inch and I'm going to running stitch up because the way that I've been doing the seams is working really well so I stitch over the blanket and then I whip stitch the edges together and it's working very well as a way of putting things together I already feel that I know how I'm attaching the bark or attaching the sewing to the bark uh, but I think that will have to be almost at the very end because otherwise it's going to be difficult for me to manipulate everything with that great big lump on but it's important for me to get it on because that's what inspired the whole thing so I'm just pushing the material so I'm only getting the edge over which does leave a big excess piece of fabric here, but that's to my advantage. Well, I wished I hadn't cut this short so my point was sticking out. But maybe the point's too long anyway, I won't know till I start to put it together. So that's my, that's my edge done. I think I'll just turn this round and finish the, finish this thread by going back down. I'm going to cut this piece of blanket back. I'm actually going to stitch this seam together now and then I'll have a I'll have a completed thing, but I'll still be able to get my hand up to manipulate things. So I, I hope I'm not jumping ahead of myself to sew this seam up. And so I'm just going to whip it together in exactly the same way. And then see what I've got. I've not, I've not actually done anything like this before. I think the fact is that you more you, the more you do something, the more you practice at it, obviously the better you get and the more the more your ideas come and it's like you can't expect to be great at something when you first start. But you can build on that. You haven't got to be put off when things come out wrong. And so that's how come I can be doing this today. This is, this is the, all the other things I've done and more of the sort of things that I know I can do. Because I've been stitching for so many years. This is totally not something I've ever done. But hopefully... It'll be an enjoyable process and I'll learn something about it and hopefully because I'm doing it on the video other people will be able to learn something about it too. At least that's what I'm hoping. I stitched that seam. Let me just see how it's looking. I actually do have something that will probably stand up. Oh my goodness, there it is. So it can stand up. I need some green or something else on there. I think I do need the green as well. And I'll put some stitches on here now, but then maybe I'll just be about ready to... Look at that, that follows on from there quite nicely. I like that going to come right around. So again I'm just going to take that edge over the wool, stitch it down. I just need to be able to see the shape. 
not sure I want it quite so gathered, but we'll see. I can always release that at a later point. Sort of looks a bit like a gourd at the moment. And I wasn't intending that. I feel as if I need to keep the opening. Otherwise I can't get up. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stitch a little ridge so that I can see exactly where everything needs to go. I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't all work out and then it'll be a rubbish series of videos. It'll just be me making stupid stuff. And, f and failing. Oh dear. Let's hope I don't then. Right. So I've got the ridge of the bottom there. Which is quite nice. I can do the same here. And then I can sort all of the... The way the bottom will go, I can sort that out right at the end. Oh, it's coming along. I'm going to try and pin it so that we can I can see what I'm up to. I'm going to use this dark. I keep using going back to these pearl cottons because they're so lovely. Okay, that's why I need the bottom to not be stitched yet. I need to be able to get my hand up so I can do things. So this is going to be the last bit I do today, I think. I just want to be able to get these folds. I really like this bit here. I want to carry this onwards. So I'm going to get that fold, roll it up into there. And I'm going to use little stitches to just push it where I want it to be. and hope it'll stay where I push it. You see by sewing that down I can stop the I can stop the fold running back up. So I can just push it. Stitch down some small stitches. I can stitch in a curve and then I can roll that back up. And I can come to the other side of it and I can do exactly the same. I can smooth this out so that that fold stays up as a ridge. Don't want to stitch it as a pleat. I want it to stay up as a, as a little roll. I've actually got two there, which is really nice. I'll take this bit of running stitch down. That's really lovely. That's exactly what I'm after. Come over to here. See if I can do a similar thing with this. And then I think I'll show you how far I've got with the putting the bark in the right place as well. I'm smoothing this because there will definitely be some places that I, I want to have smooth as well as places heavily stitched because I want the contrast between smooth open spaces and spaces that are not like that. So I've stitched a line here. I'm going to roll that excess fabric down there. And stitch up again. And stitch up again. Sort of just stitching in underneath where I want it to be flat and then letting the creases go where they please they're making a really nice organic shape I've 
got one more bit of excess here. Go back up to there. And where do I need it to be? I smooth it first. And then smooth the roll towards my stitching. Maybe that I'll do more with these, but at the moment I just don't know. Right, well, I really like them. I like the way they're coming around. You can see the edge starting to take shape, even though I've got fabric and excess here. That's okay, that's part of the process, I think. I can see I've actually got a 3D shape. And so the whole point is to fit this on. I don't know how I can do it to show myself and show you too. So at the moment, I know that that's going to be on that side. I'll be drilling little holes through here, eventually, so that I can lace this onto the silk. So I know it has to fit there because that's what I'm doing it for. But it's not that it has to be just stuck on like that. I actually want it to look like it's embedded and that the vase is growing around it like that. And at the moment I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to achieve that. But I don't have to know yet. That's the point. Maybe the way will come to me as I'm doing everything else. So, so, somehow, this is what I'm aiming for. So I'm going to put that down to one side and I'm going to just show you what it looks like so far. So I've got quite a nice, well, it's quite, it's like a picture plant shape, which I'm surprised at actually. But I do have a nice 3D shape ready for embellishment. And I think next video will be showing me, showing how I'm going to start all that. But at the moment, I've got my shape. This needs to have green on the inside, definitely. But I don't have to do that yet. Uh, so I know that's a bit of a funny thing to, to leave you with for the end of one of my videos. But that's as far as I've got. And so... <laughs> Part one of stitching a, oh, I don't know what even to call it. Part one of a bark, tree, leafy, vessel, art stitching thingy. I, I actually don't know what to call it. But it's going to be something and I'm already excited by it. I just hope it works. Well, I did say right at the beginning, it was an experiment. And considering I didn't actually know what it was going to turn out like when I started, and I just had to uh, take up my needle and start, I am really pleased with how far I got in this session. I actually, I was surprised that it's turned into this picture plant, sort of a gourd shape. That wasn't definitely what I was intending it to be. And I also think it might not end up looking like that by the time I have got this somehow embedded into the side of it. So all I can say is I hope that you did enjoy looking at that because I know it's a bit different, but I just felt I had to do it and I had to start it right there and then without any further ado and that's what I did and so 
the foam is there. I feel as if I know where it's going. I need to put the lining on here so this is green on both sides. Or maybe I'll put a different colour. Maybe I'll do a paler colour. It depends what I've got though. I might not have anything unless I paint it up or something. I'm not at that stage yet. The stage I'm at is now ready for embellishing, ready for the exciting stuff of applying things and my my painted stuff worked out. That's all dried up again and so I can really feel as if that's going to get used. And I've got all sorts of other bits I can use. And so, yeah, I'm not sure whether that'll be next week or the week after. I'm not exactly sure when the next part of this will be, but it will be a part two and also possibly a part three because there'll be a lot of work involved for me to do, but exciting work and interesting work and something to keep my brain going and keep my fingers stitching. And so I hope you did like that. And if you did, send me a message. And if you didn't, well, you can tell me that you didn't like it or what have you. I can always address that. But I hope, I hope that you did and I hope you'll carry on watching. Give me the thumbs up, the subscribe, the comments, the whatever else. Um, you know I always read everything and I reply to it all. So thanks very much for watching and I hope you tune in for when the next part of this comes and in the meantime see whatever else is going on with the stitch journal and... <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I get too confused about what's going on. There's so much. I'm still knitting, still doing the phonology wheel. What else am I doing? Oh, I've got something to show you. And I've got this, and I'll let you guess what I might be doing. I've got garden string, I've got a crochet hook, and I've started to make something. And that's all I'm going to say about it. I've got quite a lot of crocheting to do on that yet. I will leave you in suspense and just say thanks for watching and see you next time when you next visit Marion's World. Bye everyone.